Hey guys, okay, you can tell by the title of the video, there's about 10 things I hate about law school. Well, not personally me, but what people hate about law school. I was on Reddit, law school, subreddit, and I saw some interesting things that people say they hate about law school. So I'm gonna dive right into it and tell like whether there's some truth to it or, you know, most of the things there's some truth to it, but kind of expand on what people mean by it because a lot of people have a glamorized version of what law school is. I got into law school and it's just like roses and candy going forward. That's not it. We're gonna talk about that today. Let's get right into it. Okay, the first one is they, the person said they hate how little money they have while in law school. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. There's some truth to that one, right? Um, if you are the traditional law student, which means like you're going through for three years and you're not working outside of law school, then you probably won't have too much extra money, right? Because your job at that point is going to law school, right? And usually if you're a full-time student, you're not allowed to work but a certain amount of hours outside of law school. The idea is that they want you to make sure you're focused on your studies. They want you to be successful because at that point, when you graduate, you're alumni of the school. They want you to do well so they can tout on you so that they can recruit other people to the school. So them limiting how much you work is part of you spending as much time as you need to be successful in law school. So that ends up being like, okay, now you're broke, right? And I think even after, I guess the second year, I, was, I did TA, a teaching assistant, so that was some paid opportunities. Some people do summer associate positions in the summertime, so they find some ways to make a little bit of money. But in general, you probably, if you were working before like I was, and then you went to law school, that transition, ugh, <laughs> it puts you in a humbling spot. It makes you feel like, what am I doing this? What am I doing this for? Like, I'm broke right now. Like, the idea is to make myself in a better position, but while you're going to, through law school, you're probably going to feel like, Where's the money? Like, I better come out of here with some money. And then when you look at some of the statistics about when people get out of law school, some of them are not, they're not making bank right after law school. So that's even more like, oh, I'll be broke a little longer. Ah! <laughs> so I can relate to the person on this, things I hate about law school. Like, you hate feeling like you're broke. <laughs> Comment below if you're in law school right now, you're feeling like, I hate being broke right now. Okay, before I get into the second one, if you're new to the channel, what we provide here is all kind of playlists, but the particular one this probably will be found on is the Pre-Law, Law School and Beyond playlist. Consider subscribing to this channel so that you can see videos when we post every week. Um, also, give a thumbs up if you like the content, comment below so that we can get this video out to more people. It helps the YouTube, YouTube algorithm. So, all right, let's get to number two. So, the second thing I hate about law school is the fact that it feels like you're always behind. Like you never can get ahead with reading, get ahead with your your work, just balancing things out. And that can sometimes be true. Um, I did a whole video about time management and applied to like just life, but also law school as well. So if you haven't already checked that out, go check that video about time management. But I can relate to the fact that feeling behind. Like when you get to law school, there's gonna be a whole bunch of reading. <laughs> and realistically, I didn't keep up with all the reading. And at some point you have to say to yourself like, okay, it's only but 24 hours in a day. I need to sleep, I need to eat, I need to study, I need to go to class, right? You're gonna start prioritizing things. You may not have time to do all the readings. So you may wanna work smarter, not harder. If you saw my other videos, you can kind of collaborate with other people to kind of get the work done. I wouldn't rely totally on somebody else to do of all your readings, um, they maybe some supplements can help you if you get cold call during class um, to kind of get your your breast like, what's going on in this case? Like, I didn't even have time to read this case. I'm not even gonna lie, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, just the feeling of always feeling like you're behind is an honest feeling. How you respond to that feeling, it can be subjective, right? Whether you're okay with being behind because you know in the grand scheme of things, you still know what's going on. You know the topics they're trying to teach you you might not feel as bad about being behind. <laughs> but honestly, I don't know anybody that kept up with all the readings all the time for the whole three years. I don't know anybody. So give yourself a break. Give yourself some grace on that. Um, yeah, that could be one thing if you were always that kind of person that always kept up with things. That could be one thing that you just kind of have to pr 
I'm gonna be triaging a lot of things during law school. So get comfortable with that, that you probably won't be ahead on everything. It's just not gonna happen. Okay, the third thing I hate about law school is case books that cost $300, they ask questions, but don't give the answer. Now, okay, I can understand a little bit part of this, like law school books are expensive, right? And part of law school is to teach you like really how to think like a lawyer. Um, did a whole video about that too, right? So check that out if you haven't been to this playlist. But actually posing questions that make you understand like you're going to have to think things through because if it was given to you, you may not know the answer and you going outside of law school, you may not be able to figure it out yourself too. I see the purpose of that. Um, there is some answers though in the textbook. I'm not sure what textbook this person was referring to, but some of the textbooks basically give you some things. They give you some things to think about, but they also typically um, give you some just straight answers, some things, maybe a critical thinking question answer kind of thing. But for the most, most part, you can find the answer. Now, if you, how you dig deep into there is a whole nother thing, right? So I think that that may be the problem as you're going through it. Let me give you an example. So when I was in law school, we had the blue book. And if you're a law school 1L, you know the blue book is what, it's kind of like the guidebook of how you cite cases and format your legal writing, right? So we had a class where we had to like find answers to the questions that were blue book based. And I just knew the blue book didn't have the answers, right? Looking back on it now, like, I'm like, the blue book what did have the answers. I just didn't know where to find them within it, but it did have the answers. So this might be a situation where this person feels like the answers are not there, but it may be there. And, you know, as they get um, further along in their career, they're like, oh, it, the answer was there. I just had to kind of look for it. So keep in mind, but that's something that people didn't, don't necessarily like. So keep that in mind. Okay. Thing number four people hate about law school is how it affects your mental health. All right, so this one, they are totally not lying about, <laughs> let's be clear, but this person also said like, the resources that were available, if you knew that your mental health was being challenged, the mental, mental health resources that were basically unavailable to them. This person said basically, if you wanted to go to the clinic and talk with like a therapist or something, if what they weren't available, like there was no time slots available until after finals, after December, after, finals were over and at that point like before finals come perhaps you may be stressing over whether you pass the final or not right but you probably may need it to manage it like proactively manage things and there were not enough re resources and I would agree I personally didn't take advantage of the mental health resources I don't even know we had I know we had a nurse like on campus you got physically hurt but as far as like your mental health I didn't actually seek out something and I kind of wish I would have because Law school will challenge you like probably nothing you've ever seen before. People who have gone through the master's program have said like, this is nothing like, it's nothing like the master's program, right? So to say that your mental health will be challenged and to have somebody to kind of help you through that is important. So this one thing I hate about law school, yes, I hate that it challenges your mental health in the way that is sometimes unhealthy, but I guess also to piggyback on it like that, some law schools apparently don't offer enough resources to accommodate people who are seeking mental health treatment. So keep that in mind. Maybe you may have to go outside. Um, I know some people may have insurance. Maybe some people don't have insurance. Find ways that you can have somewhere that covers those sessions, but kind of make your mental health a priority. Um, I know that even when you get to the law school, the lawyer level, mental, your lawyers go through a lot of mental stress as well. And people are taking their lives. People, you know, are, becoming an alcohol, all these things because of mental health. And so if you kind of deal with that, you perhaps, perhaps can prevent yourself from having a different kind of problem. So keep that in mind. Mental health is important. Okay. Uh, thing number five I hate about law school. We're halfway through the list. Comment below. Anything hitting, hitting home for you? Like, did it discourage you from actually going to law school? Because you're like, that's the thing. Um, let, comment below so we can see what people are thinking. But, uh, the, the fifth thing that people hate about law school is the Socratic method. Um, so if you are not familiar with law school, it's based off of um, kind of challenging you to think and cold calling and having you walk through a question, a particular scenario is part of how law school works. It's not necessarily like in undergrad where you sit in a lecture hall and you're talked at to, you know, that's not what's going to happen in law school. I mean, some of it, they do give you some lecture and then eh, Mr. Jones. Tell us about 
um, Pulaski versus Johnson. What happened in the case? Okay, what do you think? What's the procedural history? What is the holding? They're basically challenging you to walk, walk, work through the case in front of the whole class, <laughs> right? So it's not even just a challenge of thinking about what the issues are that they're talking about. It's also having the pressure of doing this in front of everybody else. And a lot of type A personalities go to law school and you don't want to feel like you are not giving the right answer or making any mistakes in front of people. People make mistakes and I think that um, I can understand why people don't like the Socratic method, right? Because it kind of may embarrass you, especially if you don't know the answer. It also depends on how the re professor responds to your saying that I don't know the answer. What I found to be helpful is talking it through. Like I talk it through and then like they like, at least her, we see the, the gears spinning in her head, right? So talking it through gives the professor a sense of like, she may know a little something, she may not know the, and there's no like, in law school, the, the answer that usually is always going to get you okay is it depends. Then explain why it depends. It depends on this situation, depends on these facts, blah, blah, blah. The professor's going to eat that up and then they skip to the next person. So keep that in mind. But the Socratic method, I can totally understand why people hate that. <laughs> All right, we get to the end, close to the end. So we're at number six. The sixth thing I hate about law school is the one grade you get at the end of the semester. Um, somebody commented that basically they liked the fact that in undergrad, sometimes they didn't do as well at the beginning, but they had the time to kind of redeem themselves by the end and how law school kind of takes that away. Um, that is true. I can understand why you hate that. <laughs> I mean, basically it's one and done and that can be very stressful to kind of deal with that reality. Um, I don't know if they're going to change it, <laughs> but, but I can understand why it's stressful. Basically a buildup of everything you've learned from day one to December. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, I, the only thing I could do is try to say like we have some videos, Trace did a video about how you can outline that may help you along when you're trying to like look at things at the end of the semester. Some professors do offer a midterm and, and uh, a final. Um, a lot of times they may just want to only grade one thing. So you may just be left with the final. So trying to deal with that and kind of pace yourself to understand like this is all going to come culminate at the end in December. Let me make sure I have a good grasp of the concepts that we go along. If not, double, double back to it. So yeah, I can understand why people hate that. Okay, so the eighth thing people hate about law school is the kind of lack of guidance. Um, this person, this subredditor said, basically they feel like they just kind of walking in circles. Some, they, they say they're given the tools, but kind of don't know how to use the tools. So it's kind of like as bad as having no tools at all. And I would say that it depends, I guess, on the law school too. Sometimes they do want you to kind of struggle to farm. That's a shout out to my contract professor, Professor Mawakana. Struggle to farm, gifts will not satisfy your needs. It was an African proverb that he used to put on the board in our contracts class. It basically means like, you're gonna have to struggle through it. You're gonna have to get through it. Like you're gonna appreciate the journey later. You're definitely gonna hate going <laughs> as you're going through it. But let me just tell you, that class was my most challenging class. I ended up being a teaching assistant for that class. I would have never thought from day one I would be a teaching assistant for a class that I thought was like the hardest class ever. He didn't, I don't even know if I'm learning anything. And at the end of the day, I was learning a lot of things. I think that it can kind of probably feel, you can feel helpless that you think that you kind of just, you don't know if you're doing things right or wrong. And then that probably kind of trickles over to when you become a lawyer. You're like every day, like, I don't know if this is right. I hope this is right. And it's called the practice of law, just like the practice of medicine. You're practicing some things you're going to have to make up as you go along and, and be confident in as you're making it up, right? Based on certain foundational principles, you make educated decisions about where to go with things and operating that space. It's kind of like, it's different from science and math where there's a clear cut, cut answer. It depends. It's going to be following you all throughout your law school and your legal career, it depends. So you're gonna have to really be comfortable in those gray areas sometimes and having sometimes lack of specific guidance on things. So keep that in mind um, when you are when you feel like, oh, nobody's telling me what to do. Yeah, cause they, they want you to figure it out, right? They're gonna give you a little bit of help, but you really have to figure it out. And having the resources go can go a long way. Like I mentioned before earlier, like, you may not know that these are resources that they can be used for this purpose until later, but they're there for you. So be encouraged. I want to say that. All right. Number nine is a short one. The curve. <laughs> they hate the curve. 
The curve, for those of you who are not familiar with law school, it means um, out of a class of 100, there are only going to be a certain amount of people that get A's, B's, C's, D's, F, right? So depending on how you write your answer, then you perhaps may be one of those people that got the coveted spot of A, right? But it, it, your A is as com in comparison to somebody else. It can work in your favor or not, right? So I'll give you an example of how it can possibly work in your favor. Let's say a whole bunch of people didn't necessarily do a great job, but you have to give seven A's. You may unknowingly get an A because you just did a better, suckier job than the next person, right? So in that, in that kind of way, it works in your favor, right? Um, it can also work against you because let's say you all got the right answer, right? But the teacher can only give seven A's. So then you have to go back and double back, like who did a little bit extra? Who kind of expounded on things? Who kind of dug a little deeper? Okay, they earned themselves the coveted seven spots for the A's. And then you're like, but I got the answer right. You did, but in comparison to someone else, and I can only give seven A's, you're going to get a B, right? So I can understand why people hate that the fact that law school has curves. Um, it can kind of decide if you're at a school that, you know, ranks people, if you want to be ranked in the top 10%, the top 20 it can it can affect that. Um, so I can understand why people hate that. I went to a law school that particularly didn't have a curve, which I was appreciative of because if you earned an A, you got an A. Um, so you got to kind of look at, the, ask that if you're considering law schools, ask do they have a curve there because all law schools don't have curves. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, the last one, the 10th thing that I hate about law school is the constant bleed of money for activities and things of that nature. And I would say that kind of depends on what you're doing, um, how social you are, what kind of network you're doing. Um, it can cost a lot of money. In law school, there are a lot of social events, a lot of alcoholic Social events that perhaps, you know, alcohol costs more money than soda, right? So that may cost you more money. Or perhaps you have to buy a suit to fit into some event that you go to. Um, I can understand why somebody hates that it's constant bleeding of money for these extra, like, you know, random things to do to kind of keep up with what they feel like is necessary to be successful in law school. Some of it may be discretionary, right? It may be subjective. So keep that in mind. Um, if you guys are on your journey to go in law school, let me know. Drop a comment below. Where are you applying to? If you're already in law school, let me know where you're uh, currently at. I kind of want to know where your journey is. And like I said, check out our playlist. Comment below if you want me to comment on any other Reddit posts that you've seen that you're like, hmm, what do they mean by that? or just any other topic that you feel like may be helpful, Tracy and I are here to help you. All right, see you in the next video.